Hello and welcome to the very first episode of a brand new series on the channel. A limited series to be exact, because this one is not going to be a week in, week out kind of thing. It's going to be a little bit more rare and a little bit more special, but I'm really looking forward to doing these. I've got four in the can already, which are going to be released over the coming four weeks, and then we will most definitely revisit this series again in future. Now, many of you know I don't typically ask for likes, comments, shares, subscriptions, that kind of stuff. I tend to rely on the if someone likes it, they'll probably like it mentality. For a limited series like this, though, I will admit, it does require more input from the viewer. So if you are a fan of the channel, and if you would like to, in a completely cost-free kind of way, support what I do, all I would ask is if you do enjoy these, give it a like for a change. Maybe if you don't usually. Maybe even comment if you don't usually. And of course, if you share it, either metaphorically with a literal friend or somebody who you know would enjoy it, or of course in the traditional sense of Twitter, Facebook, whatever the case may be, then that will without question be a huge help to the series. Even something as simple as a like does encourage a video to be higher in the ratings and results of a particular search, vehicle, or game. But with that out of the way, what is this series about? Well, you could probably guess to some degree based on the thumbnail and the title of Game vs. Real that this is what you have probably seen hints of before on YouTube, comparing a video game and its physics and graphics and sound to real life. It's been done a number of times on YouTube, even in Top Gear, Fifth Gear as well, I believe. But the difference here is we're not just comparing how realistic a game is, we're going deeper than that, because the slogan for this channel has always been, let's have some fun. And that to me is one of the most important things that a vehicle or that a game can have. So although for sure the realism will be very important in this series, and in fact it's a couple of the criteria that we're going to be judging them on, the fun factor is as important as well. And instead of putting entire game series against each other like Forza and Gran Turismo, we're going to be much more specific and much more relatable, pitting one vehicle against one vehicle, that same vehicle. In fact, the real world versus that car in a particular game, and if possible, I would like to try and maybe change the game in each episode, and for the first four at least, that is the case because we're going to be featuring Forza Horizon 4, Forza Motorsport 4, Test Drive Unlimited 2, and even Ride 2. And that's just the first four episodes. And for this very first episode, we're setting the bar pretty high, because we're comparing a game to one of my favourite real-world cars, and one of my favourite driving experiences, actually, which was the BMW i8 Roadster. And we're putting it up against Forza Horizon 4 that particular vehicle, of course, within that game. Now you could say, if you're comparing realism, why not go for a Forza Motorsport game instead of Horizon, which is known for being more arcade. Well, for one thing, as I said, we're going to be looking at arcade games in the series anyway, like Test Drive or Project Gotham, so that doesn't matter too much. What does matter, though, is that the car is in the game. <laughs> and that's a big difference between Horizon 4 and Motorsport 7, which does not have the Roadster. And to do this comparison, we're going to be not only looking between the two games, as you can see, and the graphics are phenomenal in Horizon 4, especially when it comes to this vehicle. There are some that maybe don't hold up as well, but there are some which look incredible. But we're actually going to be using three specific criteria. The first is accuracy, the second is realism, and the third and final is the fun factor. Now you're probably thinking, well, wait a second, accuracy and realism, they sound fairly similar, so what's the difference? Well, put simply, the accuracy is the straight line spec, if you will, the on paper numbers, weight, power, even 0 to 60 or top speed. How accurate is the game to real life? That's the easiest one to check. When it comes to realism though, well that is different, because to me, the realism isn't about whether or not the numbers are right, it's whether or not the car feels right. So in effect, the accuracy is about the straight line stuff, and the realism is about the cornering. Does the car handle, feel, shift its weight, perform, and give you the feedback that the real vehicle does? And of course there are limits to that, whether or not you use a wheel or a controller, of course the fact that it's a game going against real life, but even so, you might be surprised at how accurately some of these games do pan real world against game. 
which for some of our younger viewers, for instance, is nice to know because chances are you haven't driven some of these vehicles yet. So knowing that it actually does or potentially could feel like it does in a game is nice to know. But of course, the final of the three was the fun factor. And the fun factor is essentially a mixture of the previous two put together. Does the vehicle have the vibe? Does it have that fun factor or maybe even a lack of fun factor, depending on the vehicle, that the real life counterpart should have in the game? Is it authentic? or at least as authentic as a bunch of arranged polygons can realistically be. So what then, first of all, about that accuracy? How accurate is the in-game i8 compared to real life? Well, perhaps surprisingly, for something as simple as numbers, it's not great, and that might surprise and perhaps even disappoint you. It certainly surprised me in some ways. There are plenty of games that get numbers wrong, but there's a difference between getting a number wrong and getting quite a few of them wrong, and this game unfortunately does, because I'm going to give it a rating of 3 out of 5, which is certainly not bad. That's basically like a 50-50, but the reason why is because some things are good. For instance, the graphics look fantastic. The proportions are superb. It really does give you the exact kind of look of walking around and being in an i8 roadster and that is one of the most important things however when it comes to other spec based stuff it's not looking as good but it's also the inconsistency which is a bit strange for instance the torque figure is spot on the power though is wrong and the biggest inaccuracy is strangely enough the weight and this seems to be a for some reason recurring thing in racing games where they get the weight of vehicles wrong in this game it's about 70 kilos and although that doesn't sound like a huge amount when you're talking a car that's already just under 1600 kilos well that addition does make a difference so overall i'm kind of forced to give it a three it's simply not consistent enough across the board to give it a four especially when you factor in that not only do the on-paper specs not match up to real life according to multiple sources but also crucially when you drive the car the top speed is wrong as well now it's too good which is a nice problem to have but that's still not realistic with the real car of course having a 155 mile an hour speed limiter compared to the car in game being able to do about 170 even in its stock form and that is exactly what i'm driving in the video a totally untuned car what then about the realism about the handling does it feel right even with the wrong power the wrong weight the wrong performance can the car still capture the realistic vibe of an i8 well i'm happy to say that the score is better and that might surprise some people who think that the horizon games are purely arcade I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 because they do a good job of transmitting the kind of light on its feet, compact but bigger than it looks kind of vibe that the i8 has. At the same time though, it does have a couple of smaller issues which kind of bite away at that perfect 5 score. One of them is that the handling is actually too light over the back end. Even at normal speeds, if you drive the car at the same speeds that I'm doing in real life, well, it still feels too loose, too light, too floaty, and far too twitchy. The real life did not feel like that at all. It feels planted, it feels beefy, but in a very light on its feet kind of way, which is almost difficult to explain. It feels fast, grippy, and purposeful, almost like a fully electric car. In the game though, it simply doesn't. It feels almost weird in terms of its handling. However, they do capture enough of that kind of lightweight wants to play kind of vibe for me to still give it a four and that really does dovetail quite nicely into the final of the three which is the fun factor and once again i'm giving it another four out of five because even though the twitchy steering and the light back end coupled with the fact that it has a little bit too much grip going to the front because for those who don't know the bmw i8 can run as a front wheel drive all wheel drive or rear wheel drive vehicle so having a front wheel drive kind of vibe is not technically wrong however in the game it's wrong because it does it at every low speed corner and that is simply not what the car feels like in real life it only does that when you're running fully on electric power and the whole point of the car is that you don't run on electric power when you're pushing the car hard. And the car knows that. So in the game, it shouldn't feel like that through any corner at all. With that being said, though, I will say that they still do more than enough of a good job of transferring the kind of fun vibe that the i8 has with certainly different steering, but 
if not exactly accurate steering to how it should feel. Compared to real life, it was a car that put a smile on my face. It's a vehicle which is wider than you would think, but still more compact than most supercars or super sports cars would be, and they certainly translated that well into the game. It looks good, it sounds spot on, the performance isn't too unrealistic to throw you off, it's not like an old PS2 era arcade game after all, and I would say that overall it's consistent enough that the smaller mistakes don't affect it too much. And with scores of decent to good in all three categories, with a 3 out of 5 and two 4 out of 5s, I'm going to give, in comparison to my real world time with an i8 Roadster, the Forza Horizon 4 representation of the vehicle, a rating of B. And to me, that's pretty impressive, considering the price difference between an Xbox and a BMW, <laughs> that's pretty good for the fun factor. Overall then, if you do enjoy driving the car in the game, you can rest assured knowing that it feels accurate enough to real life to have a lot of fun with, but bear in mind a couple of those smaller things that I mentioned, most notably the weight difference, and of course the fact that primarily the handling is a little bit too twitchy in comparison to real life. Overall though, I think they did a very good job, and the look and sound alone is very, very impressive, to the point where it almost looks like two real vehicles in the thumbnail of the video. Overall then, good job to Forza Horizon 4, I love driving the car in the game, and I certainly love driving it in real life, so of course, as I said, if you want to support this series, I would really appreciate a like and a share in particular, and of course comment down below if you enjoyed it with your thoughts, but until next time, I'll see you then. And if you're curious for a sneak peek at next week's episode, well, spoiler alert, we're going to Test Drive Unlimited 2 to feature my first car. But overall, that's it for this first installment. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope you enjoy the series overall. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.